The International Peace Bureau, of which I am uh, honored to be the co-president, has focused on Asia a lot recently. In our recent, uh, recently elected new board, um, we have several members who are representatives of very active Asian peace groups. Uh, and in fact, two of them are speakers on this webinar this afternoon, both uh, Junkyu Li and Eng Saikian, uh, Jaga Saikian. Uh, and uh, we are going to really give you an example of the new interest that we as predominantly Europeans are trying to take in Asian affairs and Asian peacemaking and peace building because we feel that this is the region of the world that we have snubbed a little bit and that we really take need to take into consideration more seriously but the entire peace movement needs to follow more clearly. I was lucky enough to have come to Korea twice in recent years I was there in the summer in June 2018 for a very, very exciting moment. Uh, it was shortly after the Panmunjom declaration and the Panmunjom hand holding and crossing the borders. And it was, it was a very exciting moment. And I was also there at the time, uh, the, the day after the elections that went so well for the peace-loving parties, or for the parties who had put a lot, of, uh, a lot of effort into promoting the renewed peace negotiations and uh, exchange with North Korea. And I met the mayor of Seoul, Park Won Soon, on the day after he had just been re-elected with a large majority. It was a very exciting moment at that time. I know that uh, he has had a tragic ending. I'm still not quite sure uh, how it happened. Maybe nobody is. But I do remember that at the time he was truly convinced of the need to work as much as possible, also as a mayor, on the exchanges with North Korea. And I remember making a point with him uh, since we in Europe are supporting, I am particularly supporting the Mayors for Peace Action in Europe, which has many thousands of members. I remember saying to the Mayor, Mayor Park Won uh, Soon, that he should make an effort to join Mayors for Peace representing Seoul, but do it holding hands with the Mayor of Pyongyang, and that that would be the great symbol of reconciliation and peace movements from the grassroots up, from the lower levels up to the national levels. We believe a great deal in what mayors and city communities can do. And uh, Mayor Park was really quite convinced about that. He thought that was a very good idea. We never took it much further, alas. Uh, I then also was invited to the Pyeongchang uh, Peace Forum in the following February. And this was one year after the Winter Olympics, which again had been such an exciting moment of uh, North and South Korean dialogue and uh, progress towards peace. And I was again taken up by all of this and enthused. Um, I think that even though recently things have not gone so uh, excitingly as was the case in 2018 and the beginning of 2019, that is no reason for us in civil society, for us in uh, non-governmental organizations, local government organizations, foundations and so on, to stop working on uh, exchange programs, reconciliation plans, non-violence, uh, crossing of borders, and so on, all those actions that we're going to hear about today. I was uh, very Im immediately in favor of the idea of the 
petition for the Gaseong Industrial District uh, that we're going to hear about more in this webinar. Um, because I think that those are the kinds of actions that we at the International Peace Bureau have always been involved in and really believe that are the things that will change the world, that will build peace, that you cannot just build peace by the presidents signing off a piece of paper, that we need to do it from grassroots upwards. Now, um, I think I have taken up uh, my time and I would like to call upon uh, the first speaker. I'm sure you all have programs, so I'm not going to list the speakers because you've all seen who is going to be speaking. But I would like to ask for the president of the Gaseong Industrial District Foundation, uh, Mr. Kim Jing Yang, I think, I imagine it's the, 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 the family name is Kim. And uh, I know that he's going to speak through an interpreter and I imagine that that is Julie that I saw. So I will be very, very, uh, grateful to Julie, who will help us understand I'm the very interesting, I'm sure, things that Mr. Kim has to tell us. Thank you. Hello, welcome. Thank you. I'm the Kim Jin Hyang. We are the Gaseong Industrial District. We are the Gaseong Industrial District. 저는 남측에서는 개성공업지구 지원재단 이사장, 북측에서는 개성공단 관리원의 관리위원장을 맡고 있습니다. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Jin Hyang Kim, president of the Gaseong Industrial District Foundation, responsible for management and operation of the Gaseong Industrial Complex located in North Korea. I am president of the foundation in the South and chairman of the Gaesong Industrial District Management Committee in the North. 이것은 한 사람이 남측과 북측의 기구, 기관장을 맡고 있는 매우 독특한 형태입니다. 이것은 갈등과 협력이 공존하는 남북 관계를 잘 나타내고 있습니다. My position is very unique because one person assumes two posts managing the GIC in South Korea and North Korea. My post symbolizes the current inter-Korean relations in which conflict and cooperation coexist. 오늘 이렇게 평화를 사랑하는 분들을 모시고 개성공단의 평화적 의미와 경제적 가치를 설명드릴 수 있게 된 것을 매우 기쁘게 생각합니다. It is a great honor for me to have all peace loving people here and introduce the value of peace cherished by the GIC. IPB 리사클라 공동 의장님을 비롯하여 라이언 브라운 사무총장님 그리고 이준규 운영 위원님과 GPPAC 제이 앵커사이칸 전 몽골 대사님 위임 크로스 EMZ 이현 조직위원님께 감사의 말씀을 드립니다. I would like to express my deep gratitude to the International Peace Bureau, IPB's co-president Lisa Clark, and Executive Director Reiner Brown. Also, thank you to Jun Q. Lee, board member of the IPB, former Ambassador J. N. Kusaikun from GPAC, and Hyun Lee from Women Cross DMZ. 개성공단의 가치를 설명드리기 앞서서 먼저 한반도의 분단과 개성공단의 역사를 소개하고자 합니다. Before introducing values of the GIC, I would like to take a look at the history of the division of the Korean Peninsula and the GIC. 2차 세계대전 후에 일본의 지배로부터 해방을 맞은 한반도를 미국과 소련이 남북으로 분할 관리하면서 분단은 시작되었습니다. 이로써 한반도는 이념 대립의 냉전 공간으로 바뀌었고 대립은 극한으로 치달아 1950년 전쟁이 발발하였습니다. The division of Korea started with the split occupation 
of the Korean Peninsula by the United States and the Soviet Union after the World War II, as well as Korean liberation from Japanese colonial rule. This transformed the Korean Peninsula into a place of the Cold War with ideological confrontation. The Korean War occurred in 1950 due to escalating confrontation. 1953년 7월 북미 간의 휴전 협정으로 전쟁은 멈추었으나 한반도는 상이한 체제 하에서 남북이 군사적으로 대치 중입니다. 아직 종전 및 평화 협정이 체결되지 못해 한반도에서 전쟁은 현재 진행형의 상황입니다. The war ceased due to the Korean Armistice Agreement in July 1953 between North Korea and the United States. However, the Korean Peninsula is in military confrontation as the two Koreas have different regimes. Since an end of war declaration as well as a peace treaty have not yet been concluded, the war is still ongoing on the Korean Peninsula. 남북은 분단에 따른 불신과 대결을 넘어 평화로 가기 위해 분단 이후 처음으로 2000년 6월 정상회담을 개최했고 개성공단은 그 토대 위에 설립된 최초의 남북 간 경제 협력 사업입니다. The South and the North held the first inter-Korean summit in June 2000 to move beyond the phase of distrust and confrontation to a peace regime. The GIC is the first industrial complex for inter-Korean economic cooperation established on this legacy. 남북이 군사적으로 대치하는 군사 공개선으로부터 불과 5km 떨어진 북측 지역에 개성공단이 조성되었습니다. 개성공단은 서울에서 60km, 평양, 평양으로부터는 160km 떨어져 있습니다. The GIC was built in the North Korean territory, just three miles from the military demarcation line, MDL, where the two Koreas face off militarily. The GIC is 37 miles away from Seoul and 99 miles away from Pyongyang. 개성공단은 북측 개성시 일대 약 2천만 평 개발을 목표로 설계되었습니다만, 현재 전체의 5%인 100만 평만 개발되었습니다. The GIC was originally designed to develop about 6,610 hectares of Gaesong region in North Korea. However, only 5% of this original plan has been completed. 2016년 2월 기준 125개의 남측 기업에 5만 5천 명의 북측 근로자 및 천여 명의 남측 근로자가 협력하며 생산 활동을 하였습니다. 누계 생산액은 32억 달러였습니다. According to the statistics of February 2016, about 55,000 North Korean workers and 1,000 South Korean workers worked together at 125 South Korean companies in the GIC. Accumulated production was approximately 3.2 billion US dollars. 그러던 중 남북미 갈등이 고조되던 2016년 2월 개성공단 운영이 전면 중단되었습니다. 현재 대북 제재로 인해 재개되지 못하고 있으나 개성공단은 2016년 중단 전까지 기존 제재 국면에서도 예외를 인정받아 정상적으로 운영되던 곳이었음을 강조하고 싶습니다. However, in February 2016, the GIC was shut down following the escalated tensions among the two Koreas and the United States. Currently, sanctions against North Korea have prevented the GIC from resumption. I would like to emphasize that the GIC was operated normally in the face of existing sanctions before its shutdown in 2016. 개성공단은 그 자체로는 
남측의 자본과 기술, 북측의 토지와 노동력이 결합한 경제사업이지만 단순한 경제적 의미 이상의 한반도 평화와 번영의 모델입니다. The GIC itself is an economic project combining South Korea's capital and technology with North Korea's land and labor. But beyond its economic significance, the GIC holds wider importance, operating as an exemplary model of inter-Korean peace and co-prosperity. 군사적 측면에서 남북 간 긴장 완화와 한반도 평화를 유도하고 경제적 측면에서는 상호 보완의 경제 협력을 통해 호혜적 이익을 향유하며 사회적 측면에서는 남북 주민 간 접촉을 통해 상호 이해를 높여 나가는 역할을 하고 있습니다. In terms of military aspect, the GIC alleviates tension and encourages peace on the Korean Peninsula. In economic sense, South Korea and North Korea enjoy mutual benefits through complementary economic cooperation. Socially, South Korean people and North Korean people enhance mutual understanding by working together in the GIC. 이렇듯 개성공단은 냉전이 지속되고 있는 한반도에서 남북 간 평화가 실현되는 현장이었습니다. As you may see, the GIC contributes to promoting peace and easing tensions on the Korean Peninsula, which is the place currently affected by the past Cold War regime. 개성공단의 본질적 가치를 크게 세 가지로 압축해 간략히 설명드리고자 합니다. Now, I would like to briefly, briefly explain core values of the GIC in three parts. 첫째, 평화의 가치입니다. 개성공단은 그 자체가 평화입니다. 남북이 경제협력을 통해서 평화를 만들고자 한 것이 바로 개성공단입니다. The first value is peace. The Kaesong Industrial Complex itself is peace. The GIC was to build peace through inter-Korean economic cooperation. 5만 5천 명의 북측 근로자들과 수천 명의 남측 근로자들이 같은 공간에서 14년간 일했습니다. 그것 자체가 한반도 평화의 엄청난 상징이었습니다. About 55,000 North Korean workers and thousands of South Korean workers worked together at the same place for 14 years. This fact itself is an evidence of great peace on the Korean Peninsula. 남북이 서로의 다름을 인정하고 서로 존중하면서 평화를 정착시키고 경제도 번영시키고자 한 협력 사업이 바로 개성공단입니다. The GIC is a project that the two Koreas have aimed to set peace and flourish their economies by respecting each other and understanding their differences. 북측 땅에 만들어진 남측 기업에서 남과 북의 근로자들이 함께 생산 활동을 하면서 서로가 서로를 배우는 과정은 매일매일 평화가 만들어지던 기적이었습니다. The process of South Korean workers and North Korean workers learning from each other while working together in the South Korean companies built on North Korean land is a miracle which builds the peace. 남과 북은 체제와 제도가 다릅니다. The North and the South have different systems and regimes. 정치 체제와 경제 제도가 다르면 사람들의 생활 양식과 규범, 도덕, 사고 방식, 관습과 문화가 다릅니다. As political regimes and economic systems are different, people's lifestyles, norms, ethics, ways of thinking, customs, and cultures also differ. 남북의 근로자가 개성공단에서 서로의 다름을 배우면서 상호 이해의 폭들이 넓어지고 몰라서 오해했던 것을 
알면서 이해하게 되는 과정들은 늘 겪게 됩니다. 이 과정이야말로 남북이 다름을 다름으로 배워가면서 평화와 통일로 나아가는 과정이었습니다. This process had to peace and unification when North Korea and South Korea learn about their differences. 두 번째는 경제적 가치입니다. 개성공단은 하십시오. The second is economic value. 개성공단은 남측의 자본과 기술이 북측의 토지와 노동력을 만나 최고의 경제적 가치를 창출하는 곳입니다. 경제적으로 완벽히 윈윈하는 곳이 바로 개성공단입니다. The GIC creates great economic values as the South technology and capital meet the North land and labor. The GIC produces a perfect win-win situation in terms of economic perspective. 개성공단 중단 전 북측 근로자 1인의 월 임금은 약 150달러 내외로 이 돈은 한 가족의 생활비 수준입니다. 천문학적 비용이 드는 핵, 장거리 미사일 개발에 전용되었다는 추정은 거짓입니다. Before the shutdown, the monthly wage paid to a North Korean worker was about 150 US dollars, which is just enough to support the cost of living for his or her family. The claim saying that the wage being diverted to develop costly nuclear and long-range missiles is false. 즉, 북측의 허주기라는 일각의 주장은 거짓입니다. 북측 근로자들은 실제 자신들이 받는 금액을 확인한 후 직접 서명할 만큼 임금에 민감했습니다. 근로자들은 자신의 월급에 근거하여 노동의 정량만큼 물품을 공급받았고 나머지는 북측 돈으로 받았습니다. Some claim that the GIC is a dollar box to North Korea, which is false. North Korean workers were so sensitive about their working wage that they confirmed receipt of wages with their own signatures and received ration items according to their actual working hours. They received the rest in North Korean currency. 세 번째는 안보적 가치입니다. The third value is security. 개성공단은 남북이 군사적으로 대치하던 군사 붕괴선 인근의 북측 군사 지역에 조성되었습니다. 이곳은 본래 6만여 명의 북측 병력이 주둔하던 군사 지역이었지만 공단을 조성하면서 북측은 해당 병력을 후퇴시켰습니다. The GIC was built in North Korean military area near inter-Korean military demarcation line MDL where the South and the North confront militarily. This place used to hold 60,000 North Korean soldiers. However, The North pushed these forces back to develop the industrial complex. 남측 또한 개성공단 건설을 위해 군사 붕괴선과 비무장지대를 가로질러 서울에서 개성으로 이어지는 도로를 연결하였습니다. Also, the South connected roads from Seoul to Gyeong across the MDL and the demilitarized zone to build this complex. 북측의 주요 군사 지역을 남측의 인원 차량이 매일 통과함으로써 출입을 위한 남북 군 당국 간 소통이 상시 이루어졌습니다. 남북 간에 우발적인 군사적 충돌이 발생해도 개성공단으로 인해 더 이상 확대되지 않았습니다. As South Korean personnel and vehicles pass through major military areas in the north every day, 
communication between the South and the North Korean military authorities was held at all times. Although there were accidental military confrontations between the two Koreas, it was not accelerated or spread further thanks to the GIC. 이렇게 개성공단 그 자체가 물리적으로 군사적 긴장과 전쟁 위기를 막아주는 완충 장치였습니다. The GIC has been a real buffer which has prevented military tensions and possibilities of war. 독일 빌브란트 전 총리의 동반자이자 동방 정책을 설계한 에곤 바르는 개성공단을 두고 이렇게 이야기했습니다. I would like to share a quote from Egon Barr. Egon Barr, a key aide to Chancellor Billy Brandt, who helped pioneer the Ost politic, talked about the GIC. 내가 동방을 설계하면서 미처 상상하지 못했던 놀라운 일이다. 한국의 통일 정책 다른 거 필요 없다. 개성공단 방식을 따라가라. 제2, 제3의 개성공단을 따라가다 보면 그 중간 지점에 경제 통일이 올 것이다. 그걸 발판으로 한국의 궁극적 통일이 있다. 한국형 통일 모델은 개성공단이다. 라고 말입니다. Quote, it's a surprise. I never imagined this while designing the Ost politic policy. There is nothing else needed for Korea's unification policy. Just follow the GIC. If there are multiple complexes like the GIC coming out, economic unification will come sometime in the middle. Based on that, there is ultimate reunification of Korea. The model for Korean reunification is the GIC." Unquote. 전 세계에서 유래를 찾아보기 힘든 체제와 제도를 넘어 평화와 통일을 만들었던 곳이 바로 개성공단이었습니다. The GIC has been an unprecedented place where the two Koreas have created peace and unification beyond their systems and regimes. 평화, 경제, 안보적 가치를 따져볼 때 개성공단을 대체할 수 있는 곳은 전 세계 어디에도 없습니다. Considering the values of peace, economy, and security, there is nowhere to replace the GIC. 더욱이 개성공단은 북측이 안정적으로 경제 발전을 이룩하고 국제 사회와 함께 평화롭게 살수 있는 방법입니다. 한반도 평화는 동북아 평화, 세계 평화의 첫 출발입니다. Moreover, the GIC will contribute to the stable economic development of North Korea. It can be a peaceful way for North Korea to live together with international community. The peace on the Korean Peninsula is the beginning of peace in Northeast Asia and even peace in the world. 안보는 소극적 평화이며 평화는 적극적 안보입니다. 개성공단이 재개되어 남북이 합의한 대로 2천만 평의 공단이 완성된다면 남과 북 그리고 국제적 기업 5천여 개가 입주하게 되고 연관 업체만 해도 10만여 개가 가동될 것입니다. Peace means active security while security is considered passive peace. If the GIC is reopened and expanded to 16,310 acre as agreed between the two Koreas, 5,000 Korean as well as international companies will move in and 100,000 relevant companies will be able to operate. 그러면 경제 협력의 고도화로 한반도의 군사적 긴장과 전쟁의 위기는 사라지게 될 것입니다. 이는 세계의 갈등 지역에서 공동 안보 및 다자간 경쟁력을 통한 평화를 만들어가는 표준 사례가 될 것입니다. 냉전을 뛰어넘는 평화의 사업인 개성공단은 한반도 안정과 번영은 물론 동북아 지역 내 안정과 협력에 기여할 것입니다. In this way, military tensions, 
and the crisis of war will be eliminated on the Korean Peninsula thanks to enhancement of economic cooperation. This will set a good example of creating peace through common security and multilateral economic cooperation in regions of conflict around the world. The GIC, which is a peace project that goes beyond the Cold War regime, will contribute to stability and prosperity on the Korean Peninsula, as well as stability and cooperation in Northeast Asia. 이런 개성공단의 진짜 가치와 의미를 여러 많은 분들이 직접 눈으로 확인할 수 있는 기회가 있기를 진심으로 바랍니다. I truly hope that many of you will have an opportunity to see true meanings and values of the GIC. 평화를 사랑하고 추구하는 IPB, GPPAC 및 유관 단체와 오늘 참여하신 관계자분들께서 개성공단과 한반도 평화 문제에 관심을 관심을 가져 주신 데 대해 다시 한번 감사의 말씀을 드립니다. I would like to again express my sincere gratitude to all peace loving organizations, IPB, GPAC and others, as well as all participants for your interests in peace on the Korean Peninsula, including the GIC issue. 8월 중순경 이행될 개성공단 대북 제재 예외 청원도 개성공단을 통한 한반도 평화 정착에 큰 힘이 되리라 생각합니다. 또한 여건이 허락한다면 우리 재단은 금년 중 노벨 평화상 수상자 월드 서밋에서 함께 동 문제로서 협력할 방안을 찾고 또한 IPB 본사가 있고 UN 대북 제재위 의장국인 독일 베를린을 찾아서 직접 이 문제를 논의하는 것도 의미 있다고 생각합니다. The petition in the middle of August regarding the GIC to be exempted from the sanctions will be a great help to settle peace on the Korean Peninsula. Also, if conditions permit, I think it will be significant for our foundation to find ways to work together at the World Summit of Nobel Peace Laureate within this year. Also, it will be meaningful to visit Berlin, Germany, where the IPB headquarters is located to discuss this issue. As you know, Germany holds the chair of UN Sanctions Committee on North Korea. 개성공단이 중단됨으로써 평화와 번영의 공간은 문을 닫았지만 우리 모두의 관심과 노력이 모여 다시 한반도와 동북아에 평화가 정찰될 것을 확신합니다. 그첫 시작은 개성공단 재개입니다. 개성공단 재개를 응원해 주십시오. Although the place for peace and prosperity has been closed due to the shutdown of the GIC, I am confident that our interests and our efforts will help the settlement of peace on the Korean Peninsula and even in Northeast Asia. The first step will be the reopening of GIC. Please support resumption of the GIC. 감사합니다. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you really enormously, Mr. Ki. Thank you very much. That was wonderful and exciting for all of us who didn't know that much about the GIC. We now see that it's uh, extraordinary and so important for everything that we at IPB right now think is important. Uh, it was also absolutely fascinating for us to hear a quote from Egon Barr who was a member of the Olaf Palme Commission uh, all those years ago. And uh, the IPB is concentrating a lot in its near future on understanding what message the Olaf Palme Commission can give us for the, uh, for the, for the coming, for the near future of the world. Um, this is, is, is fantastic. And the idea that when you say that this oasis of peace and collaboration and economic cooperation between the Koreas 
could be the beginning of peace in Korea, in the whole of Northeast Asia, but actually in the whole world. I think I could not agree more. These are the kinds of experiences that can give the rest of us inspiration and hope to keep on working for peace everywhere. Fantastic. I really look forward to our future collaboration. Of course, we will be delighted to support the petition in every way, but I'm sure Reiner will mention all of that when he uh, sums up um, in his concluding remarks after, after the next few speakers. Thank you very much. My task now is to call on the next speaker, who is our friend and IPB board member, Junkyu Lee, from the Institute for Reunification and Peace mm -hmm. Policy. Um, he is, of course, also the, the person who inspired this webinar. So we should all, we all owe a debt of gratitude mm -hmm. to Junkyu. Junkyu, the floor is yours. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lisa and uh, Kim Jin Hyang. Uh, I am a, a researcher, yeah, based on researcher based on, on Seoul and IPB board member. Uh, today, my premise, my my premise of my my presentation is that the Korean Peninsula issue is an international issue. And for example, the Korean War, which is called the Bogotan War in the U.S., and I think uh, it is the same in Europe. It was an international war. The US and China respectively were one of the main actors in the Korean War. And the, and the US-led UN forces included 21 countries around the world, including Europe, Asia, Africa, and Australia, New Zealand. Yeah, it was the first time that the, that the UN, which is basically the international organization of collective security, participated in a war as a collective military measure. The UN command is still present in South Korea in, in the form of US forces in Korea commander serving as the commander on the UN command. Now I'd like to speak three points. The first point is the meaning of Gaesong industrial complex. Yeah. I want to avoid overlapping with Kim Jin Yang's uh, presentation. So in 2000, 2016, yeah, Park Geun-hye government closed it, closed the uh, Gaesong industrial uh, complex as part of South Korean government sanctions against North Korea. But yeah, as Kim Jin Yang uh, mentioned, despite some crisis on the Korean Peninsula including North Korea's nuclear test, the GIC continued to operate until 2016. Surely it is because of the symbolic and practical meaning of the GIC. Some researchers compare the GIC with ECSC, as you know, European coal and steel community based on rule and Tsar in post-war Europe. Although the GIC and ECSC have different historical background and international environment, both are attempts to build a foundation for common security and peace by converting the areas of military confront confrontation and conflict into the zone for economic cooperation and peace. The GIC is connected with a wider and bolder vision. This picture is the West Sea Peace and Cooperation Special Zone. The vision is contained in the agreement in the agreement of the Inter-Korean Summit held in October 2007. The idea has not been realized because the administration in South Korea has changed and the relationship between the uh, two Koreas, between the, relation, two, no, the two Koreas relations has 
deteriorated. But the idea is a uh, transformative thinking to turn the waters of the border between the south and the north in the West Sea into a peace zone. The second point is sanctions. The sanctions against certain countries in international society has been have been frequently imposed arbitrarily, including the decision making process of sanctions, sanctions target, and so on. In addition, there are many skeptical voices about the effectiveness of sanctions. Even if we accept the reality of sanctions against North Korea, sanctions are not the purpose in themselves. However, in the current situation on the Korean Peninsula, sanctions are the purpose. In particular, in the US, the view that North Korea appeared in the dialogue in 2018 because of the effect of sanctions. The view is prevalent, prevalent in, the, in the US. It is well known in South Korea that the preliminary research to connect the two Korea's railroads was delayed by the UN command interference and the supporting even time flu, a flu drop to North Korea failed. In order to resume the GIC and operate it stably, it is necessary for the UN Sanctions Committee on North Korea to make a decision on the sanction exemption of the GIC. And we need the support from the international society for the meaning of the for the meaning of the GIC is peace. And the public opinion that the resumption of the GIC will help advance the peace process on the Korean Peninsula. Finally, the structure of war on the Korean Peninsula, which has been going on for 70 years. This year is the 70th anniversary of the outbreak of the Korean War, has to be dissolved. As mentioned earlier, it can be said that war and the hostility created by the war are a historical and structural factor of the problems on the Korean Peninsula, including the North Korean nuclear issue. That is why the Korean War must be officially, formally ended and a peace agreement or peace treaty, treaty should be signed. Peace is not just a state without war. We need to create a sustainable peace and furthermore, we must aim for peace building, which includes overcoming the division regime on the Korean Peninsula, promoting balanced economic growth and co prosperity of the nation. Yeah, balanced economic growth and co prosperity of the nation. This expression is the, is the expression of Panmunjom Declaration and transforming international relations in East Asia by the spread effect, spread effect of the Korean peace process. In that sense, we need to pay attention to Panmunjom Declaration and the Pyongyang Joint Declaration of 2018, which reached an agreement on the cooperative measures to improve the inter-Korean relations, such as resuming the GIC, restarting the Mount Gumgang tourism, connecting the South-North railways, and roads across the DMG, and a military agreement which is including confidence-building measures, arms control, and disarmament. They encompass ways to advance Korean peace process and the direction Korea peace process, Korean peace process should aim for. Thank you. Thank you very much, Junki. That was very, very, very good and interesting and keeps us uh, on our toes and gives us a lot of work to do. 
um, I was extremely interested with your parallel with the European coal and steel community. Um, I, I certainly hadn't thought of that, but of course, that's exactly what Europe did after the Second World War. Uh, and of course, we have all been involved with the need to uh, achieve a formal ending to the Korean War. This is something that peace movements everywhere have upheld and always put as one of their priority points uh, as regards the inter-Korean process. Um, next, we have uh, Eng Saikyan, Jalgal Saikyan, uh, who is also a board member of the IPB. Um, he comes from Mongolia. He was the ambassador to the UN of Mongolia. He was one of the architects of the Mongolian nuclear weapon free state situation and is a declaration and is now in GPAC and in particular one of the architects of the Ulaanbaatar process. And I'm sure Eng Sakyan is going to tell us a lot about that and give us some ideas of how we move forward. Thanks, Akyan, the floor is yours. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, okay, thank you very much. Well, I'm, uh, I would like to say that I'm very happy to see that IPB is now focusing on, also on Asian issues, especially issues connected with peace and security on uh, the continent. It is one of the issues that is uh, at the center of uh, not only Asia, but also on, on the center of uh, non-proliferation issues as well. Uh, the issue of inter-Korean uh, uh, cooperation is very important and it is a very important part of the Korean peace equation anyhow. I would like to thank uh, uh, Kim uh, Jing Yuan, president of GD, uh, GIDF, and our colleague Jung Kyu for their presentations. I'm sure that it provides us with uh, a lot of uh, background material and information that will be useful for our uh, petition process in the future. Now I would like to say a few words about uh, Mongolia. Mongolia is part of Northeast Asian, Asian region and interested in promoting peace in this area. We have a saying that a duck is calm when the uh, sea is calm. Hence we try to promote uh, uh, confidence and cooperation. We're, we're a small country, we don't have a big army, but nevertheless, we're trying to focus to promote confidence and uh, cooperation in the region. Well, we see uh, a lot of untapped uh, uh, reserves for trust and peace building, uh, and that many countries and civil society organizations can play a very useful role in this, based on their comparative advantages. Mongolia's comparative advantage is that uh, not only that it is a small country, but a country that does not have a territorial or border problems uh, with its neighbors, nor, nor a hidden political agenda with regard to peninsula and maintains good relations with both of the Koreas, with North Korea and with South Korea. And we're trying to play a role of uh, trust and bridge building through promoting, as I said, confidence and dialogue in the region. Uh, thus, since 2013, Mongolia is promoting a process called Ulaanbaatar Dialogue. It's a, a one and a half a track regional dialogue among the states of the region and other states, including the United States and uh, some uh, European countries. Uh, when we host meetings that includes both Koreas, representatives of both Koreas, which is uh, the strong point for Mongolia. 
because both of them are participate in our meetings. And we try to focus not on the big issues, but on soft security issues, like uh, cooperation in economic uh, area, infrastructure, and some other areas of mutual interest and benefit that uh, all the sides would be interested and would benefit from it. So in, in that process, you, you, Lombard Dialogue, even uh, uh, representatives of governments participate. Of course, they wear, wear another hat in, uh, as uh, uh, informal, uh, in their uh, personal capacities. Especially we know that uh, all the time the North Korean uh, 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 authorities from the foreign ministry uh, participate and also it provides them with an opportunity to have our bilateral meetings with other officials in their in uh, uh, capacities as uh, as uh, per, uh, it's not the first not uh, uh, not officials but in their personal capacities. Uh, the participants know quite well that. Uh, uh, where Mongolia is prepared and can provide good offices. As it has been the case, though we have not yet uh, put on the press, the bilateral meetings of US, North Korea, North Korea and Japan have uh, uh, met in Ulaanbaatar a number of times, focusing on issues of mutual interest. And uh, Mongolian inspectors, I would say, that, uh, that work with International Atomic Energy Agency have played a useful role as uh, parts of inspection teams that went a number of times to North Korea and to Iran. So we have experience in that uh, area, meaning that uh, if there will be a search for, let's say, a real a serious search for uh, ways to denuclearize uh, uh, the Korean Peninsula. We have experience, we can uh, participate in devising the mechanism, or later on, if there is an agreement, be uh, form part of those experts that would be providing uh, uh, information about the, the, the nuclearization process in that sense. So in the long run, I think we can also provide uh, share our experience with our North Korean colleagues, uh, how we were able to change uh, our uh, system and uh, transit to good governance and market economy, if there will be an interest in that. Uh, just a few words about our Blue, Blue Banner organization, which is partner of GPAC Northeast Asia. And we have launched in 2015 uh, track to civil society dialogue process, known uh, as Ulaanbaatar process, which provides and creates, so let's say, political space and venue for civil society organizations of this region, meaning of uh, the two Koreas, of uh, Russia, China, Japan, and even the United States. They come together uh, to, uh, to meet under the umbrella of uh, Ulaanbaatar uh, process and exchange views on many issues in that sense. We have even produced two joint uh, publications in which the North Koreans and South Koreans uh, in their capacity as uh, representing uh, not the government, but let's say the civil society organizations or other organizations share their view, have shared their views on this issue. Uh, another issue that the Blue Panel uh, is focusing on is promoting the Northeast Asian nuclear weapon free zone issue. Uh, we have provided a number of uh, opportunities to exchange views on these issues, and we work closely together with the not only two Koreans, but also with international think tanks like, like RECNA, which is the Research Center for Nuclear Weapons Abolition, which is based in Nagasaki. On bilateral basis, we also try to bring together the experts from uh, uh, other countries, let's check, from Japan, from North Korea. Last year, we, uh, Blue Banner hosted such a meeting. 
this year we were planning to uh, hold a bit a larger meeting in June, but because of uh, the pandemic, we had to postpone this. In short, uh, Blue Banner is full, fully supports uh, this issue, to discussing this issue, and is ready to work, uh, to contribute, to working on the text of the petition. If need could be, would be that we can also uh, transmit the ideas to our North Korean uh, colleagues, if need will be. Of course, that will depend on our cons uh, uh, conversations and our discussions. The, the uh, petition campaign is just beginning. I'm sure that IPB would support and its support and the experience in such uh, uh, campaigns is very useful. Looking forward to working with our colleagues of uh, IPB. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Engsek, and thank you very much. That's, uh, that was very exciting for me, certainly. And uh, I think that Reiner will have a lot to say about that in his concluding remarks about how we can get this petition moving. Um, now let's go to, we finally have a woman, um, Hyun Lee from the movement Women Cross the DMZ. Uh, I speak English, English, so I would tend to say DMZ, but still, I think the internationally it's called the DMZ. And uh, I was guided to along the DMZ by a group of women from the Women Cross the DMZ when I was in, uh, uh, in Korea at the beginning of last year. Uh, they are famous throughout Europe, throughout the world, the women there uh, who crossed the DMZ. So thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, Hyun, please, the floor is yours. Good morning or uh, good afternoon or good evening. <laughs> uh, my name is Hyun Lee and um, I was asked to speak about um, the perspective of the United States um, on the Korea conflict. So in that regard, um, I would like to discuss two main challenges vis-a-vis um, -vis the U.S. view of Korea, and then finish by offering um, what I believe is the best path forward. So the first challenge is how we diagnose the problem when we ask the question, what is the Korea conflict? And when did it begin? So I'm gonna pause for a few seconds for you to think about your own answer to that question. And then now think about how do you think most Americans would answer that question? Is it the same? or is it different? If it's different, therein lies the problem, I think. I believe that the perception among most Americans is that the Korea conflict began when North Korea started to develop nuclear weapons. Before that, most people in the United States never really had to think about Korea. From the perspective of Koreans, however, of course, the Korea conflict began way before that, even before North Korea started to develop nuclear weapons. People on the Korean Peninsula had lived with constant war threats for many decades, so constant, in fact, that it has become normalized and people have become desensitized. But as Professor Kim um, explained earlier, the root of the problem is the unresolved Korean War. And this has actually had tremendous human cost. Um, I'm sure you can think of the entire list, families torn apart for 70 years, um, people living with unresolved trauma because the war never ended. Um, people living in silence because they couldn't talk about the war and 
their families in the North. Um, for the people in the North, sanctions and stunted economic growth, environmental degradation due to military exercises. I mean, the list goes on and on. But none of this had concerned Americans. And as someone mentioned earlier, of course, the Korean War in the US is called the Forgotten War. And whatever unfortunate thing happened in Korea is something that happened over there, not here, not in the US, not affecting our day-to-day -day lives. And then for Americans, the Korea conflict only became an urgent matter deserving of attention when North Korea started to test nuclear weapons and then shooting long-range missiles into the air. And I think 2017 was really the first time that I felt that people in the US actually sat up to take notice. And there was a palpable sense of fear. Can they really hit uh, the US with a nuclear bomb? You know, this, is, this was the for foremost on people's minds. But because nobody had really paid attention to what was happening in Korea before that, it was as if the crisis just emerged out of nowhere. Why is North Korea suddenly behaving this way? And so then the only explanation that people could come up with was that you know, Kim Jong-un is crazy and unpredictable and therefore North Korea is very threatening to the world. So if your diagnosis of the problem is that it started with the nuclear weapons by North Korea, then of course your solution is going to be get rid of North Korea's nuclear weapons. But if your diagnosis is that the root problem is the unresolved war, then your solution is very different. It is to end the war. And I think this fundamental difference between how, you know, in how we look at the problem is the greatest obstacle right now in the USDPRK talks. It has been for, for, for many, many years. The second challenge that I will discuss is the intensifying competition between China and the US and what this will mean for the countries around in the region, but particularly for South Korea. As you know, the 2018 US defense strategy names four countries as the greatest security threats. China, Russia, North Korea, Iran, and then China is top of that list. And it is a bipartisan consensus that the US must quickly shift to the Pacific theater because it does not want to fall behind China um, in the race for geopolitical control in the region. But because the US spent the last 20 years pouring billions into the so-called war on terror in the Middle East, the US is very far behind. It's unprepared to constrain China. And great power competition, quote unquote, um, against a country like China is, is very, very different from fighting a war against non-state actors in the Middle East. It requires different weapons, different technology, different strategy altogether. And resources in the US are limited because Americans increasingly want a focus here at home, especially now we have multiple domestic crises. We have a you know, failure of containing the pandemic. We have rising unemployment. There is civil unrest due to systemic racism. So what is the US answer to this uh, dilemma this, to this situation is you know, the Pentagon's answer, according to its defense strategy, is it has to strengthen alliances in the Indo-Pacific. So the more the U.S. resources are overstretched, the more it will pressure its allies in the region to join in its campaign to isolate China. But this is based on the very critical assumption that U.S. allies in the region agree with its assessment that China is their common threat. I don't know that this assumption really holds true for South Korea. For one, China accounts for almost 40% of its exports, 
more than 30% of its imports. Um, you know, the U.S. wants uh, other countries to boycott uh, Huawei, um, but, you know, that company accounts for 16% of South Korea's uh, electronics exports. Um, so this competition between China and U.S., as it intensifies, puts countries like South Korea in a very awkward position uh, because it has to choose sides. And I would think that South Korea has very little to gain and a lot to lose if it is forced to be in an adversarial relationship with China. And its alliance with the U.S. will continue to pressure South Korea to subordinate its security and foreign policy priorities under U.S.'s broader interests in the region. So I think this means that Seoul will need to think very hard about what is the best path forward for its own future, for the future of its own people. I would say that the best path forward is already written in the Panmunjom Declaration that the two Korean leaders signed in 2018, which is to replace the, uh, the, the armistice agreement with a permanent peace agreement. Um, a peace agreement uh, that ends decades of hostilities with North Korea and then commits all parties to gradual arms reduction would allow the two Koreas to make peace on their own terms, resume cooperation, um, and it will also free up the U.S. to draw down its own forces in South Korea, which I would argue is actually in the strategic interest of the U.S. That, that's for another discussion. Um, a peace agreement is also a key step forward um, toward the broader vision of nuclear disarmament and real reallocation of military spending for human needs because really our true security threats are the pandemic, climate change, systemic racism. These things cannot be resolved militarily and we have to shift our focus to deal with these long neglected but festering crises. Last thing I will say is when we look at the last two years, what it has taught us is that we cannot just sit back and expect that the top leaders will work things out. For Washington to change course, it will take tremendous pressure from below and from the international community. So we need to raise a unified voice and call on Washington to come to the table to end the 70 year old conflict, replace the armistice with a peace agreement, allow the two Koreas to determine their own future, including the resumption of cooperation at the Kaesong Industrial Complex. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yan. That was, uh, that was great, thank you. Uh, I think that that is something that uh, we are very willing to participate in, uh, not just with the petition, but also perhaps pressuring our own countries, our own European countries, which I'm sure are much more open than Washington right now, than the current Washington administration, to actually uh, reformulate their positions and come out more openly in favor of a peace agreement uh, along the lines of the Pan Panmunjom Declaration. We now have some time for questions and answers and comments. Uh, Sean will help me identify the people who uh, raised their hand. I'm looking at this um, participants thing to see if I can find where where it is that people are raising their hand. Uh, you can also raise your hand physically, all the way I do. Um, and Sean and I will have a look for you. I see Balkrishna and Engsa Khan. Uh, Balkrishna first, please. 
So thank you very much, IPB and Mr. Rainer Bain and Lisa for arranging such an important webinar. In Asia, there are some very tricky problems and the North Korea, South Korea is one of them. I visited South Korea five times. I also visited DMZ for some peace meeting, banned landmines meeting and peace meeting. And I interacted with the many South Korean people, youth, all the students, some politicians, as well as I meet North Korean people, in, not in their country, but out of their country, like in Europe. And I discuss with them, they want unification of the South Korea and North Korea. South Korean people also like unification of North Korea, South Korea, like Germany, like East Germany and West Germany. And for that, people to people contact is one of the way. People to people, can, when the people to people contact will increase, hopefully by Germany, Korea will be one. So I like to ask the, our South Korean brothers and sisters, please show us some of the ways when the South Korea and North Korea can come together. Thank you. Thank you, Balkrishna. Thanks, Akyam. Yes, I have a question uh, uh, addressed to President uh, Jin Hyun Kim, if that's possible. I was told that uh, recently U.S. Deputy Secretary of State, Mr. Began, uh, visited uh, uh, Seoul and Tokyo. In Seoul, I'm sure that uh, he discussed the issues of inter-Korean cooperation. I was wondering whether the issue of GIC was touched upon. Thank you. Would you like to answer, Professor Kim? Me. 답변 드리겠습니다. 음, 먼저 비건 차관부의 한국 방문 관련해서 개성공단 관련한 코멘트는 없었습니다. 먼저 해주시겠습니까? Okay, let me clarify and let me take the question. First of all, yes, it is true that Begun visited South Korea. However, re regarding the discussion, there was no comment about the GIC. There was no discussion about GIC. 둘째, 비군 자관부의 한국 방문은 제가 판단하기에 최근의 남북 간 위기에 대해서 한미 간의 인식의 공유 정보의 공유를 위한 것이었다라고 봅니다. 두 번째였습니다. And the recent visit of the Begun to South Korea, according to my personal judgment, is mainly because we needed to talk about the recent conflict between the two Koreas and U.S. and South Korea need to share the awareness or the information. It's just for the exchange of the information and the share the viewpoints about that issue. 마지막으로 비건의 방문은 현재 11월 미국 대선 상황이 트럼프 대통령에게 결코 녹록치 않은 어려운 상황이라고 보고 북측 변수, 북측의 군사적 도발과 같은 어떤 군사 도발 같은 막아내기 위한 사전 정지 작업 그 정제 작업을 위해서 북미 간의 관계는 지금 아무것도 안 돌아가기 때문에 남북 관계로라도 돌파구를 마련했으면 좋겠다라고 판단해서 남북 협력, 남북 관계 모색에 적극적인 지지를 표명했다라고 보여집니다. 
And thirdly, it is related to the upcoming presidential election in the U.S. In the November, there will be the presidential election, but I don't think it's going to be favorable to the current president, Mr. Donald Trump. They want to control the so-called North Korean variable, such as the military pr provocation. They would like to do the refining work in advance, and that is why they came here. However, as you know, the relations between the North Korea and the U.S. is not working. They would like to find out the breakthrough between the in, through the inter-Korean relations, and that is why they supported the inter-Korean cooperation. Thank you very much, Professor Kim. Thank you. Uh, I must tell you, I am superstitious, and so please don't do that again to say that you uh, don't think this administration is going to win the elections because uh, I, I, it, it's too important for me the fact that we need to change something in the United States. I don't want it to be upset by our good luck to disappear because we bank on it too soon. I'm afraid uh, I have not been a very good moderator and we are running out of time. In fact, we have practically run out of time. So, well, the first thing this means is that we're going to have to have another one of these webinars uh, because there's there's too much information for those of us who are who are not well versed <coughs> on the subject. Um, but, but I now need to give the floor to Reiner, who is going to make his concluding remarks, and I will still say a, a final word of goodbye after Reiner is finished. Reiner, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you so much, Lisa, and thank all of the speakers very, very much for their highly interesting introductions. I think it was really a very good webinar, and it's quite impossible to summarize it. So I will say some words for IPB, but also some words as a German. And when the president of GCI, GIC starts with Egon Barr, I will start with a quote of the boss of Egon Barr, of the Nobel laureate Willy Brandt. He says, peace is not everything, but everything is nothing without peace. And I think this quote, which was a part of his speech at the Nobel laureate ceremony in Oslo, reflects the situation. We have to fight for peace. And before I come to the peace point, I would underline two points. First of all, I want to say for me, the Korean history, which problems we see now, has not started with the Korean War. For me, it has started with 1911, with the Japanese invasion in Korea, which was for me the start point of the very difficult development of these countries till to now, but this is definitely a point for discussion. And my second point, before I come to the concrete steps, is as a German, please be very, very cautious to compare the German developments at the end of the 80s and the beginning of the 90s, the unification process in Germany with the Korean process, mainly by three reasons. First of all, there was never a war between the two German countries, never. Second, there was never so big economic differences between East and West Germany than there are between the two Korean countries. And third, never one of the German countries had their own nuclear weapons. So there were many, many differences, and we should be very careful to compare this situation. I know that the, some of the German foundations were offering workshops, lessons learned from the German unification. I am very, very careful to compare the situation. We definitely need a very deep discussion to find common and different developments. Third point for me, and this is definitely the start point, is that the GISA project is a peace project and this is what we absolutely needed sometimes history is so quick and we forgot that two years before we were discussing about a nuclear war 
in this region, which immediately could be a worldwide nuclear war. So it takes time and we need peace projects. And the most advanced peace project is definitely the GIA project. That is, we have to do everything, that it will be open again, that it can start working. And it's for me not only a peace project, it is also a conversion project, which I today learned. It was a military base where they developed uh, the new factories and the new common work, workplaces. This is a big advantage to be all are fighting for conversion. It's for me a communication project. People have to speak with people. Enemies have to speak with each other, or so-called enemies have to speak with each other. It's a cooperation project and it's an economic cooperation. And one lesson learned from the common security policy in Europe is that the common security policy starts with developing an economic relation between both sides. This was also a part of the 50s and the 60s between the so-called East Bloc and the West Bloc. So that is the big advantage that I think we should definitely support all the activities which are promoting the reopening of the GRC uh, complex. What does this mean for IPB? For IPB, it means for above all to learn and to follow the advice of our Korean friends. And I'm happy that our Korean friends start developing the petition. It is mainly their petition. They have to develop the text. They know the circumstances much, much better than we. And I think the role of IPB and all the others is to support what they are developing. We are open for discussion. We are open to help. But what we are do, will do is to support the petition global development. And I'm very happy that you announced that you want to try to finish the petition till to the mid of August. I think then we can definitely discuss how to launch the petition. And my suggestion is that the next webinar will be the launching webinar for our petition. At that time, the petition should start looking for so many signatures as possible. Signatures which we are collected online and when you want also above all in your country offline. I think we should try to get a lot of signatures towards the end of the year and then think how we can launch the petition to the governments, to the United Nations, to the international community. What the IPB can do is promote this, can looking for further partners. And I'm absolutely sure that also some of our trade units with whom we are working will support the activities so that we really can have a broad support for the petition. For me, this webinar was an excellent start point for for working together, for common communication between us and for developing the next steps for the petition. And I can only thank you to all the speakers of today for their big support for the activities. Thanks to Lisa for the moderation. And Lisa, you have the final words. Thank you. Thank you, Reiner. That's fantastic. And we're actually on time, even though I'm from Italy and we're not famous for being on time or punctual. Uh, there is so much more I would like to know. I would like to ask our, our friends and our speakers that I'm very much looking forward to further opportunities to speak with you all about the Korean process. I think it's fantastic, uh, fantastic proposal by Reiner that we meet again in a public webinar like this one when we have the petition ready. Of course, we will have to be in communication before, before then, but we have another open public webinar with the petition uh, with all of you who were here today and then some and IPB will put its best work into helping disseminate and collecting further signatures for this very important petition. The GIC seems to me as well 
the basic peace project we're all looking for and we all need. And maybe we can copy it for so many other parts of the world where this kind of project is needed. Thank you. Thank you, GIC President uh, Professor Kim. Thank you, Jung Kyu Lee, for having the idea of this webinar. Thank you, Aung San Khan, for all your wisdom and experience. And thank you, Hyun, for giving us the picture from the United States, which, uh, alas, is always the elephant in the room. Uh, by the way, that's where I was born, so it's not just uh, complaints on my part. It is also, it is also, was also my country. Well, see you again, probably sometime in mid-August with our webinar, with the text of the petition. Peace to everybody.